All right. Hello, everybody. Um, we're going to talk about the modern age today, which is from 1914 to 1945. Um, so we see this change in American opinion where it was a real time of optimism um, in America due to new technology. The Industrial Revolution is re happening right now, and America's recuperating after the Civil War. And so we have skyscrapers and we have all sorts of good things. Um, we have the emerging middle class, of course, is making a bunch of money for the economy. So everything is going really well. Um, and then World War One happened. So it's also known as the Great War. Um, one of the poems that we'll read is called I Have a Rendezvous with Death. Um, so this is just a brief history if you know absolutely nothing about World War I. Um, obviously, I'm not a history teacher, so if you want more information on it, Google it or ask your history teacher. Um, so basically, it was Britain, France, and Russia versus Germany. Woodrow Wilson tried to remain neutral, but because of submarine attacks, we ended up joining the war in 1917. Um, war was intense due to intensified technologies such as the machine gun. It was known as the Great War or the War to End All Wars, and the war ended in 1918. Um, and then we move into the Roaring Twenties during this time period, which is where the Great Gatsby takes place. So the economy boomed and skyscrapers rose. Um, we had the prohibition of alcohol, which we learned was a big part of the feminist movement. Um, in the realist naturalist period is taking effect and basically uh, made liquor illegal, leading to bootlegging and the rise of organized crime was in a direct effect of beer being outlawed and alcohol being outlawed. Um, there were a few fads going on, raccoon coats, flagpole sitting, and a dance called the Charleston. Um, jazz music was really popular during this time period. We have African Americans trying to find their place in America, and part of that was through jazz music and movements and dancing. Um, we also have flapper girls, which you can see pictured here, which we will talk about more in depth, I think, in your research projects. Hopefully the ambiance group will do a good job of presenting on that one. Um, and if you get a chance, flagpole sitting is just like what it sounds like. It's people sitting on flagpoles. Google it. Um, that's what it is. I don't know why. I guess when you don't have cable television. Oh, we do have the radio now. Um, so modernism, this is about the writing um, that's taking place in the modernist movement. So it's a breaking from tradition and traditional forms. So instead of having like iambic pentameter for poetry, we now have free verse going on. It's a fragmentation and experimentation with point of view. So instead of just having third person narration and being like he, she, it, they did this, this, and this, we now have he, she, it, I am doing this at the same time. So it's kind of switching points of view depending on it. We'll read a piece by Steinbeck and he actually starts off in third person and then switches to second and then actually goes to first in the end. So it's really kind of a different technique. In poetry we'll see it a lot. Um, there is a sense of disillusionment and loss of faith in the American dream. Basically it's not happening anymore and it's not what we thought it to be. That idea of a house and a white picket fence is not perfect for everyone. It does not fit everyone. Um, we have a very romantic idea of the American dream that it's whatever you want it to be now, but back then it was this cookie cutter kind of idea. And we'll see that Nick especially does not feel that he fits this American dream that's happening. I'm trying to get my quote marks on screen. American dream. Um, there's an emphasis on bold experimentation and style and form over the traditional. Um, so instead of writing again in specific forms like, you know, Shakespeare's poetry with rhyming and meter, there is this emphasis on cutting lines whenever you feel it's right and not using correct punctuation, not capitalizing. E.E. E. Cummings didn't even capitalize his own name. Um, just to experiment with that form and not be traditional. So it's this real rebellious kind of period that we're actually in the postmodernist period now, so we're actually extending on that. Um, there is this interest in the inner workings of the human mind, so a stream of consciousness, first thought, best thought. Um, Hemingway was a huge, huge supporter of that concept. Um, authors felt alienation like outsiders, especially some of the writers who did not get 
get to participate in the war in World War One. They're called the Lost Generation because of this um, inability to participate in the war because they were too young. They feel disconnected from some of the other writers and their peers during this time period. So it's this alienation. They feel like outsiders, which causes existential angst. You know, all this wondering of, you know, what is my purpose? Where is God? Um, and the am I going to find my purpose in, in this meaningless, chaotic world? Um, and there is this loss and exile and social evils. So those are some of those themes. Like, what am I going to do with myself? I am lost. We already see this with Nick Carraway in chapter one, is he is already lost within his generation. That's why he moves to the East Coast and finds this romantic ideal in Gatsby. Um, some words to describe this period is chaos, futile, pessimistic, unstable, loss of faith, collapse of morality and values, and confused sense of identity and place in the world. So where am I supposed to be? Stream of consciousness is a term you'll need to know. So it's a method of narration that describes the flow of the thoughts of the character's thoughts or feelings in the mind of the character. Another word for this is interior monologue. It's just all the thoughts happening inside a character's brain. James Joyce and Ezra Pound are really known for this. Um, disillusionment is a feeling of disappointment resulting from the discovery that something is not as good as one believed it to be. Um, the picture actually shown is a artist's portrayal of Disney. It's called Disillusion Land. It's in Britain. It's really cool. It's like all the fairy tales, how they really would happen if it were reality instead of this like fairy tale. But the author or the artist's point is that um, not everything is good as you thought it would be. So basically it's like you take this epic family vacation, okay? And you remember it in your childhood as being the most amazing experience. And you're like, we're going to do this, this, and this, just like the original. And then you go back and it's terrible because it can never live up to that ideal that you have in your head that is being disillusioned. Your reality and expectation did not align. They missed each other. And that is what disillusionment is. Um, fragmentation is everything's broken. So the plot, characters, theme, images, and narrative are fragmented and broken, and that's to represent society at this time period um, being broken. And essentially, you can think about it this way. Or we're going to read a piece actually by um, it's called Love, Bra Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by Eliot, and it's just a series of images put together. So you get an idea and a theme based on all these random images put together. And that's fragmentation. Okay, and that is all for today.